Climbing, it embodies passion, creativity, commitment, adventure, and community. Evolve athletes live this every day, on the rock, in the gym, and on the road. For me, I've always been a creative person. I think I've always liked drawing, and I mean, even for me, climbing is totally connected to that. You know, climbing for me is like my main creative outlet. And I guess, you know, in that way, sh shoe design has become a big creative outlet for me as well. Well, one of the reasons I've really enjoyed working with Evolve is um, it's not just because the shoes are good and are helping me with, you know, what I want to climb. It's also being able to test them and give feedback and feel that the feedback gets incorporated in the shoes. What I feel like the biggest thing that I can offer to the shoe company to Evolve is putting the shoes on my feet and going climbing in them. So that's, that's what I, you know, that's, that's what I want. And I just, I always want, I want more of that, you know. Being involved actually in designing a shoe is super fun. I mean, I've given feedback to other companies, you know, years and years ago. But uh, this is like actually, you know, coming in at the ground level, trying to figure out something that's, well, that isn't even in the line. It's a different type of a shoe. Well, I, I think it's great that an athlete, especially such a high profile athlete who's been climbing his whole life, is developing shoes. I mean, it makes sense that, um, you know, someone who's pushing the limits of climbing would be like giving the feedback and saying what, what he wants. Um, so he's got, I mean, some amazing things coming out. For me, it's taken, taken years actually just to kind of understand for me what is the ultimate climbing shoe, you know, so um, you know, it went from, you know, taking, tweaking the chaos and creating the Pontas and tweaking the Pontas and creating the Optimus and now we're, you know, five years later we're really at a whole nother level, you know, and it's, it's really exciting to see just the, you know, just the level of quality, craftsmanship, materials and, you know, design, you know. At the moment, um, I've been climbing in the Kushidos a lot, as well as the Bandits. Those are like my two favorites. Yeah, you know, I didn't really know what to expect um, when I came on it, in terms of product development. Um, I worked with some other companies in the past with product development and it was very minimal. It was just like, and you never really saw your, your ideas in, in action, in product. Uh, so I was, you know, I've been pretty psyched to actually feel that my feedback is getting used. Oh, it's like super exciting and, and it, not just to be on the phone a little bit, but face to face, you know, having something in your hands and tweaking it around and, and uh, trying to come up with something that is the best thing that you can think of is, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much fun, yeah. The Gashido is actually, um, fitting me in the heel and because of the the three straps it's sucking really well up into the arch of my foot because in the past when I you know you put your shoes on and then you take two steps to get to the base of the climb and it would just like suction away from my arch and then the heel would pull out a bit and I'd have this dead space in the back so I'm pretty excited to be able to um, have a slightly larger shoe on now and have it, my heel stay in place. It's like fitting really well. A lot of the times when companies make samples, clothing, shoes, they're not 100% production. They're still in a tweaking phase and you never know, maybe the fabric is gonna be different, maybe something, you just, you just don't know. There's a lot of question marks. Um, the basics are there and I was a little nervous about wearing them up the whole pit, up the whole route. I mean, a thousand meters is a lot of pitches. And uh, put them on my foot or didn't wear them for the first three pitches and then brought them up the rest of the way and was super psyched that I brought them. The shoe that we're working on, uh, at least it has the tentative name of the Astroman. They're the Astroman. They're made for like long, sustained track climbing. Well, the name Astroman is, is from a route in Yosemite and it was probably the, the first real big wall free climb there. Historically, it's, it has like a huge part, well, in, in Yosemite history. It was when it was first done, um, you know, Hard 511 was pretty much the top grade in Yosemite. And it had like 
five pitches of 5.11 and a whole bunch of 5.10. And, and, it, and no matter what, it, it goes just up at this really impressive wall. It's like this 1,500 foot wall. And, uh, you know, most of the other climbs around there are big wall climbs where they, they use aid climbing to get up. So historically, it's um, as far as big wall free climbing, it's, it's maybe the most famous of all the Yosemite climbs. And it kind of epitomizes the traditional climbing. Aspen is significant to me partly because on my first trips there, I was just so overawed by it. And then I was finally able to do it with a rope. And then some years later, um, it felt like a reasonable thing to go and, and try to do it without a rope. And it was certainly one of the, uh, I don't know, biggest breakthroughs, I guess, that I've had. Just it felt like, not like an outer space, but just like a whole another level of fun. Just kind of like what I got into climbing for the first place in the first place for it was just yeah so the Astro Man is a traditional type shoe so it needs it, it needs to do a number of things that say for some sport climbing shoe you don't really need to do that for instance protecting your ankle so you want a shoe that kind of protects your foot when it goes into a crack so it needs to be stiff enough so that it'll still edge well what's the first thing that pops into your head when I say first round first minute um, <laughs> first thing that pops in my head is just uh, what a good route, you know? Like now I can finally like enjoy the the whole thing, you know, because I mean it's kinda like that, you know, it's like it was like an epic, you know. It's the same thing like if you get benighted on a big wall or something. Me and my friend Sterling, we got benighted on the Incredible Hulk when I was seventeen or something. We slept at the top and we were suffering so bad. And you know, like somewhere down the line, you know, like we're like, yeah, we're gonna like laugh about it, enjoy it after the fact, right? And so it's kind of the same thing with a little, you know, forty foot sport route. Ah! It gave me a lot of difficulty. It was really hard. It really, you know, it really pushed me physically and and more than anything mentally, you know, because I had got to the point where I was, I was really close to being able to do it a long time ago. And for one reason or another, the the stars didn't align. Ah, I no! Over and over again, at the very last move. Hold it. I fell like over 50 times at the last move, and it was just got to the point where it was so ingrained to fall at the last move that I didn't know how to not fall at the last move. Ah, but ah. it can be really, really taxing psychologically to to get beat up on a sa the same route for two years straight falling the last move and you know kind of felt you know like I was beaten you know like I felt like you know well I might maybe I won't do this route you know I kind of like confronted failure a little bit with it and maybe that's a, a huge lesson in and of itself you know just to learn how to you know not need to always complete my project you know and I was just climbing one day with a buddy of mine and um we were climbing in a different spot altogether, and it just happened that it worked out that you know there was a really nice, crisp air blowing in the afternoon after we were already done climbing. It was like, why don't we just go check it out and see see how it goes? And uh, you know, to not get stressed out about it, I was just like, yeah, just for training, you know, just to just to you know, you know, train a little bit. I'll get on it. And uh, for me, that was the the time that it all clicked, you know, that I wasn't really worried about sending it. I didn't even think I was going to, you know, I wasn't even trying to send it. It was just like, I was over it. I, you know, didn't care if I sent it or not. And I was able, I was free because of that, just to, you know, be myself and climb and be free in the moment. And that's like when it all came together, having that open mind and just not really being afraid to fail, just letting it go and just, you know, just c climbing from a place of just, you know, joy and enjoyment rather than like fear or something like, oh my gosh, am I going to send it? I really want to send it. And what if I don't send it? And all of these like thoughts that can creep into your head, you know, that can, that can just, you know, hinder you from, from sending. You know? First round, first minute is definitely one of the most rewarding projects I've ever sent by far because, um, it was such an effort. It was such a, you know, you know it took, it was such a, a long process. And 
I don't know, a lot of people would be like, oh, you must just be relieved to get that thing over with. But actually, like, it was just one of the most satisfying, like, best feelings to finally send it, so. I've lived in Bishop about 15 years. I can't really consider living virtually any other place because here you've got the winter climbing down the valley bottom, the bouldering and sport climbing, and then in the summer you can go up into the high country and, and get onto the peaks. Initially I came to Bishop for the climbing and actually it was for the bouldering. And it took a lot to kind of have it feel like home because it is such a remote place with a, a very different mix of people living there. But now, after learning that I could you know, go into the mountains in summertime, I can go sport climbing, go bouldering, it's really definitely feels like home. I really like basing out of Boulder just because of the community for one. I have a lot of really good friends and the climbing gyms are nice and it's this aspect of I travel a lot throughout the year. I go on all sorts of trips around the US and around the world really. And it's always nice to come home and know that like know that you have a community and know that you have good rock climbing you know. Good rock climbing and a good climbing gym to train at is kind of what's been really important to me and why I haven't left Boulder in, in a lot of ways because I still have projects in Boulder, you know. What's your least favorite thing about living in Bishop? I don't have a least favorite thing about living in Bishop. It's just super killer. For me, the, the downside of living in Bishop, I'm a girl. There's really no shopping. So that's the only downside. You have to order everything online. I'm sure many climbers have been in that situation where it's like trying to find where is the best place to live if you're a climber, you know? After 10 years of being on the road, for me, I was just like, you know, I had so many great experiences and um, that totally shaped me, has shaped who I am, just traveling and living out of my backpack. But it got to this point where I wanted to kind of you know, create a home base for myself and um, create a community around where where I am and not just be a different place every week and uh, be so spread out. You know, I wanted to kind of focus my energy in one place and so I was kind of trying to, you know, find that place. Like, where is the place to live if you're a climber? I think when it comes down to it, though, you know, there isn't a perfect place. It's just, like, finding a place that works for you and... Uh, and that also that has so much to do with like being in the right place at the right time, the right people, and you know, somehow it all clicks. Living in Bishop, coming up from uh, so the south, have you ever stopped and had the fresh jerky? Or the really <laughs> good beef jerky? The one you pass on 395? Yep. You know, I've never stopped at the jerky place. It's funny, when you live here, you just like, I want to get home. So no, I've never stopped and bought the fresh jerky. I've almost stopped to get, they had like local honey there as well, and, and they said olives. Couldn't have been growing them right there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thank you. Isn't that, the visitors stop and... <laughs> Is that the, the place. place from Bishop? Yeah, I guess I'm a yeah, really good cowboy beef jerky. <laughs> it is. Cowboys. No, seriously, it is really good jerky. They, they actually got pretty good. Gas fresh jerky.